monitoring elite uh, heart rate variability each morning for a morning readiness scale was really, really good at um, developing the impact that poor life is very consistent in how it improves. Obviously, each individual will, will defer um, due to their genetics. These are our five food groups. Three times you had steamed spinach. Um, and this is an example of three different athletes following the same program. Aspects of this one and a big takeaway for this message is that football pre-seasons and off-seasons Monitoring elite uh, heart rate variability each morning for a morning readiness scale was really, really good at um, developing the impact that poor lifestyle can have, whether it be bad sleeping habits, um, highly stressful periods, might be exam period, um, uh, fight with friends or, or partners. So it, it, HIV, I think, is really, really good at building the awareness on the impact that stress can have on the body. And this graph, which is just something I've drawn up, um, You've got your tissue growth, which is at night time, um, probably when the athlete's in deep sleep, they've hit their peak of testosterone. Um, let's say it's just before midnight. Um, cortisol will inversely be at an all-time low for that period of the day. Um, although when they are in a highly stressful period, it might be a football match, it might be, a, a, you know, a uh, they just got sacked from their job, um, it might be public speaking. It could be anything that's causing um, stress to that body where cortisol is going to be released to be able to cope with that acute level of stress. Um, inversely, for whatever reason, uh, testosterone goes down. So this is our first benchmark slide, um, like I was talking about a little earlier, for those that missed um, my intro to this. So this is these are... Um, a, it's a benchmark um, system that I've created where in the red you've got uh, a general population, so an area that you know, thoughts, your own personal internal dialogue might be an issue for yourself, uh, and this is a, an area that you might want to or you've identified that you want to improve. Um, so in your playbook, um, there's a couple of questions around vulnerability, uh, whether you see it as a, embrace it as a strength or a weakness. Um, this is another thing that Ben Crow is really strong on for um, culture and, and club culture towards performance. And um, one area that um, both Port Adelaide and Richmond and a few successful clubs recently through the Resilience Project or, or Ben Crow, they've really embraced uh, vulnerability. Um, getting in and same in my time at Hawthorne, um, you players would, would get up in front of the whole club and, and talk about an area of their life that, was the most challenging for them. And that's an area that, depending on how you respond to that stressful period, it could be post-traumatic gr um, growth or it can be post-traumatic stress. So with athletic development, uh, the body is very consistent in how it improves. Obviously, each individual will, will differ um, due to their genetics. Um, some are faster than others. Some are more aerobically um, talented um, so there's there's different genetic traits um, but ultimately the body will improve by putting a stimulus on it so physical stress which is training from there your lifestyle will dictate um, whether you maximize the adaptation from that training session or whether you um, break down and, and lead towards illness or injury or potentially performance plateau so that's why the lifestyle is so important that's when your body uh, actually improves and adapts. Moving over to lifestyle. We believe the physical side for footballers is easier. So we're talking about training um, and playing the game compared to the lifestyle. And that's for these reasons. So the physical side is more often than not seen by coaches and staff, as well as your teammates, um, where lifestyle is done usually at home um, by yourself. The physical side, particularly on game day, is celebrated. So when you kick a goal or uh, lay an amazing tackle um, or your team wins, you'll celebrate it and really enjoy that moment where the lifestyle side of things, having a good night's sleep and eating more vegetables, um, you may not be, you may more than likely probably won't fist pump the air um, like you just kicked a goal when, when eating and, and living a healthy lifestyle. So um, we don't get the positive reinforcement that we do compared to the physical side. 
And like I mentioned, it's, it's shared with our teammates, so it's a lot more enjoyable. Um, we get to ex- share the experience where living a healthy lifestyle is, is done usually by yourself. In terms of nutrition, so fueling your body to, to repair and grow, we want to think of and, and reflect on three big areas, and they are drinking plenty of water. Uh, body's mainly made up of water, so making sure that you're well hydrated. Limit the processed foods like takeaway, um, package type foods like cereal uh, and anything that has been that hasn't come from the ground like fruits and vegetables or um, come off a tree or come from an animal product. So uh, making sure that you're eating real food and the more colour the better from your, from your real food. So plenty of fruit and veg. These are our five food groups. So just looking over your food diary, we want to have grains, vegetables, fruits, protein and dairy throughout uh, every day over the seven days of the week. So just have a count of how many times did you have all five of our macronutrients in a meal. So list how many times you did that. Then have a, a list of how many times you had four of these food groups in one of your meals. So an example might be for breakfast you had multigrain bread, so you ticked off the grains. You had steamed spinach, so you ticked off your vegetables. You had uh, bacon and eggs, so you've ticked off your protein. And you had a glass of milk. So get the four out of five. The reason why recovery is so important is because that's when your body adapts. So if you train, um, you're putting a stress on your body. Um, so you're actually breaking the body down. So at that time, like you'll feel at the end of that session, whether it be a hard weight session or the end of a conditioning session, you're quite fatigued. So your body is actually immediately worse off in that current time because it's recovering. When it where it gets better is when you're sleeping at night. Um, and when you're you're uh, taking it easy, so rest is incredibly important part of uh, ingredient for um, getting better over time. Um, and if you're not resting enough, you will see more injuries, or you'll just see a um, plateau in your results. So sometimes um, it's not about doing more, but it's actually allowing your body to to recover. Rest will also allow for higher quality training, and you may have found that in your own experience. If you rest well, you'll you'll um, have higher quality, um, and your bit your body will be able to um, run at more uh, intense speeds, as well as you'll have a better ability to jump and and accelerate. Um, so feeling fresh is is what we want every game, um, and this is an example of three different athletes following the same program over a 12-week period, so like a pre-season period, and you've got three different results. So you've got the red, um, which is someone that's um, not recovered enough and they've worked themselves into the ground and they've got the worst result. You've got the green, which is someone who doesn't push very hard, so they sort of coast and take it easy, don't get uncomfortable, uh, but they got still some progress because they were consistent with their training. And then you've got the optimal, which is the blue, where they're training hard, um, not quite as hard as the red and dipping themselves too far, um, but they're pushing themselves a lot further than the green uh, and they're allowing their body to recover. So they're in the sweet spot of performance, allowing their body to recover, but also training with intensity at the right times. So that's where we want to try and work toward. So important aspects of this one and a big takeaway for this message is that football pre-seasons and off-seasons Uh, The balance between getting in appropriate training load to improve your speed, your power, your strength and your capacity without increasing your risk of injury. So there's a trade-off. If we do too much or too little, any of those extremes, we're opening ourselves up for injury. If you do too little because the game is so brutal, when when you start playing match play and start playing games, you're not going to be ready to transition and you'll be vulnerable for injury. And if you do too much, you might not um, time your run and you either mentally burn out around April or 
you physically overload your body to the point where you get an overload type injury. So there is a sweet spot um, and listening to your body is really, really important. But the number one takeaway from this one is that we now, if you've had a few weeks off, we want to start getting back onto routine and start climbing the mountain. Our first exercise for this presentation is a bottleneck. So what I want you to think about for last year is what was the bottleneck of your performance? Okay, so what was when everything was going really well and you're in flow? Okay, so if we, anal if we think of the analogy of pouring water out of a bottle, it starts really fast in the initial part and then the, the bottleneck slows down that flow. Okay, so what, was the, what is the bottleneck of your performance? When you don't perform at your best on a given week, was it because of your capacity to run? Was it your ability to maintain your position, so your strength? Was it your first three steps, your acceleration? Um, was it your body composition? Were you a little bit overweight or were you too heavy? So from an athlete development point of view, I want you to note down what was the bottleneck of your performance? What affected your flow? to play the best game possible. Focusing on your strength. So that slide before was obviously a little bit more around making you well-rounded because football does demand a lot of different aspects of you to play good footy after week after week. You need to be fit, you need to be fast, you need to be strong, you've got to be agile, you've got to be all the things that, um, that is required on the body. Um, so that's focusing on your weaknesses. This is focusing on your strengths, this slide. So I want you to note down what separates you from your peers, why do you play in that position and your peers don't? And what separates you from the competition? What is your axe, so to speak, for in terms of your athletic ability? So a focus for your Get Better Plan this time of year is note down one area that you think will help you work uh, uh, widen your bottleneck, increase the bottleneck. So if it's something that's really limiting your game, it might be the reason why you you put everything, every part of your game is a strong suit and you're, you're getting picked, you would get picked in the side, but you're not playing in a certain position that you want to play because of that bottleneck. Or it might be you might be playing the reserves because of the bottleneck or, you know, or you might play one good game, but then you don't play back-to-back -back performances because of your bottleneck. So note down what's an area this off-season, pre-season that you're going to focus on to improve this bottleneck of your game. News at Prepare Like a Pro. So just some updates, like I mentioned at the start of the presentation, this will be a platform where I'll just let you guys know some new things that are coming, some exciting things that are coming to make the program better. So uh, all our coaches currently are Melbourne Victorian based, but um, we've got a coach coming on board from Adelaide, a coach coming on board from Sydney and a coach coming on from Perth. So it, um, hopefully the next few weeks, We'll sign those guys up and they'll be set up to work with athletes around the country, which is exciting. Uh, looking to try and get a coach in every state so everyone can um, work with a Prepare Like a Pro coach in each state.